Hey, do you want to know a top tip? Read the instructions on a pattern and then you won't end up a mess like this. Take my word for it, I know. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Shall we start with the disaster from last time? <laughs> so I was knitting the close to you shawl badly. So it's a free pattern on Ravelry. And that is how it looks like when it's knit correctly. If you want to see how it's knit incorrectly, have a look at the video from last time. <laughs> so I am knitting this with King Cole Summer. And it is a blend of 55% bamboo, 37% cotton and 8% PVB. It has a texture to it, like a little bit of a bobbly texture. So last time, shall I wear it? <laughs> Let's wear it. <laughs> I've got oh, threads, all sorts. Okay, so last time, as you will see from the picture, these stay the same. So you have eight of these yarn overs. And that stays the same throughout the pattern. Mine didn't. Mine was getting bigger and bigger and bigger on that section and not on the other section. So I thought when I was doing the yarn overs, I was creating stitches then. And so I pulled it back, but now I've followed the instructions and read them properly. I realized that that isn't what I was doing wrong. So I think what I was doing wrong was I had I had mixed up what row I was on, I think. So I was increasing on this section when in the pattern you only increase on the garter section. So you can see, I hold it down, you can see how that bottom part is staying sort of straight apart from the teeth. And then this part is being increased and going up there. So that is where I went wrong. I was doing increases where I shouldn't have been doing increases. So, But like I said, it's a very easy, straightforward pattern if you just read the instructions and follow them and keep track of where you are. <laughs> so yes, so that's been corrected and I'm enjoying knitting that. And yes, all the colour changes. So I think I've worked my way through all the colour changes and I'm starting again now. So I'll be coming in, I'm just coming into the brown and I'll be doing this again. So I think that's going to be really pretty when it's finished. So yes, no drama this week. No drama at all, she says. <laughs> the second thing I've been working on is my flax light. But this is a pattern by Tin Can Knits and you may have knitted the flax before in an Aran weight. This is the flax light is basically the same pattern but it's in a fingering weight four ply. So I thought I'd do this for summer and I'd picked up this from Hobbycraft, the Women's Institute four ply. It's 100% acrylic but it's the, oh upside down, that's useful. <laughs> It's in there soft and silky, which is very soft and silky. It feels lovely on the skin. So I thought for non-sunny days, when it's a little bit chillier in the UK, I thought this would be really nice. And it's a really nice colour. I really love in knitting these colours. But I bought the balls at, a, at different times and I thought, oh, well... It's commercial, sort of like machine dyed yarn, so it's all going to be pretty much the same. So it's not going to matter if it's different dye lots, is it? It does. <laughs> so this is what it's looking like now. So as you can see, it started off darker and then it's very much got a lot of white in it down there. But I thought I'd call this a fade. So the flax is knit top down and it's a raglan so that's why the stripes follow on round there 
and these sleeves are then put on waist yarn and then they carry these on i've not finished the bottom because i thought i'd do the sleeves and then i can see what yarn i've got left to how long i want the job to be um because obviously it's so a smaller distance to go around the arm so that means they've come up long longer they've come up thicker bands of color than the body but yeah it's the same color well you've got white where the top section there's no actual white it's like a pinky white but then it's quite a bright white down there but i'm not disliking it <laughs> and of course it's different on the back because where the colours finish so what I'm going to do if I switch up that side so what I'm going to do is when I finished it I should try both sides on and decide which side I like the best to have at the front because the flax is knit the same both sides so it doesn't matter which way it goes I think I shall decide and then I'll, if I just put some different colour yarn at the back on the neck then I'll know what side I like to wear at the front. But yeah, I think it's going to be quite fun. It's just a sweater to wear, so on with a pair of jeans. So it's quite crazy, but just with simple jeans, I think it'll be quite fun. So yeah, definitely my colours. And um, unintentional fade. <laughs> so yes, if you buy commercial dyed yarn, and you think like me well there's not going to be that much difference in the color be warned there can be a lot of difference in this i don't think well the result i don't mind the result but obviously it can if you've got two different arms and everything i did choose once i realized there was something going on i then set out and decided what yarn balls i was going to use for what so the other sleeve looks similar the yarn ball looks similar to this sleeve so the sleeve should look about the same and then that's why i was using the very lighter ones in that bottom section so it does just look like it's dark at the top and then goes lighter i think if i'd known then i might have done it that way so it's lighter going darker but hey ho <laughs> It's exciting not knowing what you're going to get, isn't it? It's a mystery knit. You don't have to have somebody else to decide what the mystery is. You can have your own mystery when you're knitting to keep it fun and interesting. So yes, I have finished this arm. I have one more to do that's still on the waist yarn. And uh, so that I've gone quite far down, so I'm not going to go much further at the bottom. But that is going to have to wait because I'm off on my holidays tomorrow. So I am going to start something different to take on my holiday. I'm trying to keep my whips quite low. I may take the coast to shawl because that's nice and small and something that's easy to do on the move. But I'm going to set myself a little challenge which I thought would be interesting and should make a nice interesting video as well. So you may have seen in my last video when I showed you my summer yarn haul and I was matching up patterns that I wanted to knit. So I really wanted to knit this, which is the Capri Summer Sunrise, available from Let's Knit in an old magazine 2015 or to pay for on Ravelry. Or you can go straight to the designers page. It is Kelly Mendes. I'm sure I saw she had them on hers. So um, yeah, three different places you can get them. So they can be bought or you can go on Readly if you have Readly 2015 and you'll see it on the front cover. So I wanted to knit this one in Drops Bell in the blue, which I thought would be nice. But I've tried to like squeeze out to do it but I'm just it's beyond yarn chicken basically I don't mind a bit of yarn chicken but considering what just happened with that one I thought no <laughs> no dear. if you're going to do this and you want to fulfill your challenge 
then that is not the one. So I'm going to have to get some different yarn for that one. So the one I thought I would knit on holiday is this one and it's the Drops Midsummer's Day which is quite apt really isn't it because I'm going to be starting it well just before Midsummer because it's actually my husband's birthday on the longest day so it's 21st of July June and we should be <laughs> I do know when his birthday is really 21st of June and we will be away then and I'll be knitting the Midsummer by Drops so this is a nice little camisole and so I thought that would be a good one for a challenge so can I knit this while on holiday with a hyperactive husband who doesn't like to sit on a sun, lo sun lounger for too long <laughs> So yeah, if I was just going to be laying by the pool on the beach and stuff, then easily. But he likes to be off out doing stuff all the time. So we shall see how much knitting I get done. But I thought it'd be really nice to take my yarn and my needles and start it on holiday and actually wear it on holiday before I come back. So that is what the next video I'm planning on doing is going to be the progress of the little top and see if I can have me wearing it on holiday. So I'm going to be knitting it in the Drops Muscat, which isn't the recommended, but it's got exactly the same yardage as the Drops Light, is it? Cotton Light, they're recommended, but I'm doing the Muscat because I fancied this creamy, it's an off-white, and it's mercerized, so it's got that shine to it. And it's mercerized, just cotton, 100% cotton. So yes, it's taking 250 grams for my size. So I thought that would be a fun little knit and a fun little challenge. So we are away for two weeks, so I think it's very achievable. That's why I wanted to take my shawl to finish that as well, because I can, I'm sure I can finish this and do that so we shall see how I get on so if you'd like to see that then keep your eye open in a couple of weeks for that video which will be coming up I would also like to talk about today my cross stitch because I've had a few people I'll say goodbye to the knitters if you're not interested in cross stitch then that is all the knitting for today so take care and thank you for watching if you are interested in the cross stitch and you wondered if I was cross stitching then yes I am and I shall show you I've not been sharing my cross stitch I have got a cross stitch channel but I've not been making videos for a while just because just like my knitting I'm just working on one or two projects and with cross stitch there's just not much to show so it's not very interesting to do regular updates but I have still been enjoying my cross stitch so I have been working on Bothy Threads Flight of the Bumblebee and it's a Wendell design and so you might if even if you're not a cross stitcher you might recognize these designs because they are very popular on all types of things so the, the make of the cross stitch is Bothy Threads and yeah, really like this. It comes as a kit, so it's got everything you need in the kit and I am knitting it, knitting it, <laughs> cross stitching it as is. So it comes in the Ada and it's already speckled. So I've done the B and I'm stitching the tulips. I've only got a couple of tulips to go now on that end. And then it's really the back stitching on the tulips. I don't think it's hardly any back stitching on the bee, but there's back stitching on those tulips there to be done. So not an awful lot to be done, but I think I will take this on holiday with me just to finish that off. And then that'll be finished up and start on some, well, carry on with something. Because the reason I was just doing one project is because I've got so many projects on the go. I just wanted to finish some things off. So that's why I'm just focusing on one thing and enjoying that one for a while rather than keep swapping them over. Because I do tend to get stressed. If I've got too many things, it's like a to-do list rather than 
this is what I'm choosing to do because I enjoy it. So that's why I'm thinking, yes, just do one thing and enjoy it and then move on to the next. So that's my fly to the bumblebee. And the other one that I've been stitching on is my yearly temperatures. So this is a design by Stitching Mummy and it's the temperature butterflies. And so the idea with this is that you start off, so I've got January, February, March, April, May, and I'm just filling in June. And you have a chart with all the different colors for different temperatures. And then every single day you just stitch on a section for that day with what temperature it is. So you can see from January, although we started off really warm, the first day of January, the blues are the cold temperatures and then moving down, it started to get warmer. And then now in June, we've got some really warm weather here. So didn't have re the coldest temperatures up in the January, February. I'm stitching it on a fabric flare fabric. So I don't know if you can see. I can't see it on my camera all day. I can see, you can see it. It's called branches. So it's grey with white branches on it. Very muted tones. It's a fabric flare. So it's printed on the front and it's plain on the back which means I can take this on holiday as well because it's fully washable. So I shall be stitching on that, keeping that up, but I will be stitching still the temperatures for my local area, not the Spanish temperatures to keep it consistent because this is like a log of what the temperatures in this area. So um, yeah, I'll be doing that. I shall take along this frame to stitch it in. So this is a Q snap. This is my preferred method most of the time. So you just have these that clip your fabric on so, and then you turn it to tighten up. And then this is called a grime guard. And then that means when it's hot and sweaty, you've got suntan lotion on your hands, that's all going onto the grime guard and not onto your fabric. So then this is easily washable. So that is the method of stitching when I'm sort of out on, it's nice and small as well, so you don't draw attention to yourself. <laughs> Although I'm used to that, knitting, stitching, I don't see what's wrong with that. And yeah, generally people actually will have like a spark of a conversation with you. If they see, they say, oh, what have you knitting and everything and yeah. Especially if you're knitting socks. If I'm knitting socks on my nine inch circulars, I generally get people saying, oh, you're knitting, what are you knitting? We say, oh, socks at home. Oh, for a child? No, they're mine. <laughs> so yes, I find this a nice size to stitch on the go. It doesn't take up too much room. So that is something else I'll be taking on holiday with me. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye for now.